activity. The big news over the weekend came out late on Sunday is that OPEC has decided to cut production of oil by 1 million barrels per day, which has led to a $5 jump in the price of oil. Limiting supply, of course, is intended to boost the price of oil. After last week's huge announcement by Russia, China, Saudi Arabia, Iran and other countries that they're going to stop paying for their oil in US dollars, this does seem like another attack on the US at a time when they know that the US is fighting inflation with higher interest rates and the US economy could be struggling. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. We shall see. Okay, let's have a look at some trade ideas for you. This is the weekly chart of oil and you can see how oil has gapped open and jumped, which is obviously the intention of OPEC, especially announcing it before the markets opened, they were looking for the maximum impact on the oil price. So nasty if you were short oil over the weekend. And I can show you a reason why I would have been short oil over the weekend in a minute. We've jumped to this upper trend line here, which dates back to December 2022. It'll be interesting to see if that holds. That's around 81.75. Today's high is 81.69. So it's bang on that trend line. We really are hitting an important level up around the 81.75, $82 area. Here it is in close up on the daily chart. We did actually have some resistance on Friday on the close. 50 day moving average, the trend line going back to December 2022. And we also had some moving averages on the short term charts. I would have been suggesting a short position perhaps this morning if we hadn't had that announcement. So we really were hitting a resistance level. And of course, we've just burst through the 100 day moving average and up to this trend line here. Now we start moving, moving above $82. I think that will be the next buy signal for oil. This is the hourly chart in oil and you can see we were in this upward sloping channel hitting trend line resistance as well as those resistance levels I just showed you on the daily chart. So it did look like oil could have turned around. We were very overbought. So it's quite interesting about the timing of this announcement from a chart perspective anyway. But just to remind you, I was looking at a longer term bottom in oil. We had hit the 38.2% fib at around 65.25. Remember that my buy level was around the 65.50. 6450 area the fib levels that i've got on this chart go all the way back to this crazy oil spike down to minus 40 dollars i don't know if you remember that or whether you were trading it but that was pretty crazy and we've also got the 200 and 500 week moving averages around that 65 dollar area so i had expected oil to find a longer term bottom and to bounce i think this is the start of a bull trend in oil and once we get through 82 dollars that will be quite significant for this week. I think we probably will do it at some stage this week. And as I said, this is not going to help the inflation fight, certainly in the US, higher energy prices at a time when the consumer is being squeezed by inflation and squeezed by higher interest rates. This could really add pressure on the government and the Federal Reserve in the US because they can't raise interest rates too far. They can't have bond prices fall too far with the banking crisis. And we know that banks are suffering losses on their long bond positions. And we also know that they're continuing to suffer a fall in deposits as people move their money out of banks and into money market rates, which are paying a lot more interest. For gold, the hourly chart is the one that's relevant to me. This is the one I'm focusing on. We were in this sideways triangle, probably a bull flag, but we're testing the lower trend line of this possible bull flag. That's around the 1956, 1955 area. So if that holds, then we maintain the bull flag. And if it is a bull flag, that means eventually we'll break above 90, 1995 for a buy signal and then gold can continue the bull run that it has been experiencing lately. There's part of the bull run that you can see there. Now we break below the mid 1950 area, 19, then it looks like we're going to sink to 1947 and we could even go as far as 1935, 1930 which would be a good buy level for me in gold this week. Silver's hit a big resistance level, as you will know if you've been reading my report. It looks like we could be retracing a little bit. I can put a trend line on here in the very short term. We've got some support down here at 2350, relatively minor, but it should hold on the first test. Now, if we do break down, we've got much stronger support around 23, 20, 23, 10. The dollar has been all over the place for the last week, as you can see at the bottom of this one hour chart. We were in a short term bear trend and I thought this would continue. But look at the hourly chart. We've just broken above the 100 and the 200 hour moving averages. We're testing the 23.6% FIB in the dollar index at 102.85. So now suddenly starting to look quite positive. I could even call this a short term 
double bottom on the hourly chart. Let me just adjust this down a little bit so you can see it more clearly. Potential double bottom push above the 100 hour and the 200 hour moving averages. If this keeps going and we get up through the 23.6% fib for the dollar index at 102.85, then we will start to see the 100 hour moving average cross above the 200 hour moving average. And that could be a short term buy signal. Then if we get up through the 103.20, 103.30 area, that would confirm something a little bit more positive for the dollar index this week. I'll keep an eye on it and report back to you during the week. With the strength in the US dollar that we're seeing this morning, we're seeing the Aussie weaken to test a trend line that goes back to the middle of March, nearly three weeks old. This trend line, we're really bang on it right now. 66.55 is the low. We start breaking below 66.50 and that looks like a sell signal for the Aussie dollar versus the US dollar in the short term. This could just be a bear flag and it would be perfectly normal for the price to break to the downside for a sell signal and then continue the bear trend. That's how bear flags work. The euro is breaking down against the US dollar this morning as I speak to you. So this is a sell signal for the euro versus the US dollar as long as we hold below the 108.30 area. We should be heading down to 107.70 as the first stop. Wouldn't be surprised to see 107.20 uh, tested at some stage this week. We're going to see these moving averages cross over on the hourly chart probably now that we've broken down the 100 hour blue cross below the 200 hour red which would add to downside pressure. We have a small double top in the short term as well, all looking quite negative just in the short term for the euro versus the US dollar. Yen has been weakening against most pairs. We were buyers of the Canadian dollar yen, the Aussie dollar yen, and the New Zealand dollar yen at the end of last week. And that worked quite well because we did push up. Once we've broken above these moving averages and some trend lines, it did give us a buy signal. If you jumped onto those trades, you've done quite well. Looks like we could be seeing a correction now, a little bit of yen strength creeping in. So hopefully it will dip to the buy levels that I have suggested on the trade sheet today. Looking at the US stock markets, this is the S&P through 2022 and the beginning of 2023. Seeing a recovery obviously does look quite strong. The S&P could easily get up to 42 100 where we should see some resistance we'll have a look at that if we do approach that area i'm really quite surprised at the strength of the stock markets they've shaken off the banking crisis don't seem to be paying any attention to the potential problems in the commercial real estate market with refinancing likely to cause problems for property owners office blocks residential prices in the us are certainly heading lower so that could be a problem but stock market is just shaking off any of these worries if oil keeps going up, I think it's going to cause concerns about inflation. Stock markets don't really seem to care. NASDAQ's had a really good recovery and is approaching the 100-week moving average at 13,475. Dow Jones also having a good recovery, about to test the 100-week moving average, which is at 33,647. I would absolutely love to get very short. These stock markets have a big short position. I just can't see how this is sustainable, but I don't fight the price action. I just stick to what the charts are telling me. Okay, I hope that's helpful. We'll have a chat later on in the week.